You so. function on like four hours of sleep? Yes, but I have a very abusive relationship yeah. with caffeine. Okay. <laughs> I was like, how much pain do you do? Like, Man. Hey. <laughs> none. If anyone's none. listening, not at all. <laughs> none. Not at all. Um, <laughs> oh, man. Uh, God, I, actually, what time is it? But, uh, <laughs> if, this, if this wasn't flagged yet, it definitely was there. <laughs> God, my nose hasn't started bleeding yet. Sorry. Burst that bubble. I'm a nerd. I'm a nerd. Did anyone notice him mumbling under his breath like an incantation, maybe? <laughs> every, every guest I bring on, it shows that Aaron needs to hire the person. That oh, I my God. Realize, oh, you don't have Just how contracts. unbelievably unprepared I am for life. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> life of a creative. Let's, let's yeah. think about nothing but doing the thing you want to do. That's, that's my philosophy. <laughs> let's think about nothing else. Yeah. So, well, thank you. So, yeah, we... I basically wake up and do capitalism every day. Welcome everyone to the Think Fresh Move Forward podcast. Today we're talking about money, but first, the news. So I ran across this article in the Wall Street Journal this week, and for those of you who have been living under a rock, uh, you might not know that TikTok is, uh, is on the verge of potentially being banned. It's one of the rare instances where people on the right and on the left, lawmakers on both sides seem to want this to happen. And it's, uh, it's interesting because it's for different reasons, right? But uh, when we look at this article here, one of the things I want to reference, and I think you know, whether it happens or not is up for debate and whether it's actually going to go through. But if it does, it's really interesting to think about some of the parties that really win out of this, right? And so if you scroll down for me, Aaron, you'll, you'll go to the winners section here. So rivals is a huge one, right? So Instagram, obviously Meta, right, has been bleeding uh, user base to TikTok, right? And you think about how they, with Reels, are trying to compete. We've talked about this yeah. in other podcasts. They're trying to compete. But the hours are, it, like, the hours of actual watch time on Reels pales in comparison it's about 10 percent of what tiktok oh, wow. gets right i had no it's, idea yeah it's tiny in my head they're like neck and neck yeah but they're not but right? just because i'm on instagram I'm you're instagram not young enough I'm to not be on, on tiktok, TikTok. Yeah, yeah exactly right so the amount of hours spent on that short form but and you think about the entire platform is short form right versus on instagram your people are going through the feed other things right uh so obviously rivals want it to happen scroll down for me here uh, parents. Oh, the other interesting thing about this TikTok. I don't know if you all know this or not. In March, they just uh, instituted a uh, time limit ban for minors, which mm. didn't exist prior to this. And mm. what was most interesting about that is the the Chinese version of TikTok did have a ban for minors. Right. Actually, and, minors are not even allowed and, to use. Yeah. TikTok so so there. so they. Obviously, they don't care if people in the West use it, right, <laughs> and, and be addicted to it. Uh, but they recently just did that, and I think that was under the pressure of everything that's basically happening now, right? They wanted to actually get ahead, so Utah yeah. just passed a law that has a curfew in force, and they can allow parents to override. Yeah. So I think they were trying to get ahead of the other platforms in hopes of uh, saving themselves. And it's actually interesting. So in China – they actually not only have limitations on who, how old, and when, but they heavily content moderate what is actually on the platform, and oh, it's yeah. all geared towards mm -hmm. education yeah. and, in some cases, indoctrination. Yeah, um, yeah, one hundred percent of that. Yeah, yeah. Which yeah, is and then uh, uh, like uh, uh, they promote weight loss, they promote like healthy lifestyle stuff like that. Yeah, yeah. Because there, there was one video of like it was like um, like a fifth grade class. And all the kids were assembling AK 47s as part of the session training. And that's something. And that's, that's something sweet. for you. <laughs> <laughs> that's interesting. Uh, it's like, huh? I, I, like I didn't to do scroll, that in fifth grade. <laughs> I'd like to scroll down though to losers here, and this is this is an audience that really is uh, is gonna be out of luck here if they don't have any kind of platform other than TikTok. And that is uh, users and businesses and creators that have mm -hmm. completely <clears throat> like zoned in on TikTok well, and yeah, no it, other platforms. It was a, it's a yes and no question or it, yes and no answer to that. It's the business owner who built a following on TikTok and only TikTok 
they're the losers. That's what I mean. But if they used it to gain audience on other platforms, sure, like you should, yeah. you shouldn't ever be on one platform. Yeah. For example, I've noticed actually over the past few months, our former guest Nick D, he has a huge following on TikTok. He has what like two million followers on TikTok, and yeah. he built his whole you know Spotify music career on that. But I've noticed him posting a lot more frequently on Instagram and YouTube than he did before. Yeah, uh, and he's trying to. I and he's also gotten to a point where he's he he is he has weaned himself off in the last bit uh, of of TikTok TikTok and at least weaned himself in the, from having a necessary uh, uh, marketing strategy in TikTok. Well, and I will I will agree with you there, Ryan. But I'll also say this: your action all be in one basket. Of course, right? But I'll also say this: uh, the younger. Gen Zers, and if your product is a hundred percent towards Gen Zers, and that's it, like that's the audience you need to reach, they're all on TikTok. They're not on Facebook anymore. So, it, it, yes, it in, not, a, in an ideal world, but you'd be on every platform, true. but you can't necessarily reach every generation to the same degree on every platform. But a lot of them do have Instagram and YouTube on their phones. Yeah. Okay. So sure. Right. But if, it's not like they're, they're going to stop these kids, or like, because this is like crack cocaine to them yeah uh and they're not going to just not view the shorts anymore they're going to go somewhere else so oh where sure that, sure and that's that up audience... for debate where that's going to go right yeah. and so but but it doesn't change the fact that if you've built a massive following specifically to gen z specifically on tiktok this is a real bad thing for you ultimately if if it ends up happening mm -hmm. right so yeah. uh there there you know the the point that cody was making i think you brought up a good one about oracle because that's also mentioned in this article right so one of the things to get ahead, right, that TikTok's been doing is they partnered six months ago with Oracle to bring all of their operations to Texas, right, and to bring it all stateside so that way it's no longer – I don't know if it's Texas that they're going to do it, but Oracle's well, based in Texas. It's called Project Texas, and yeah. it's going to be based in Texas. There you yeah. go. So the right? next six yeah. months after – uh, six to nine months, there will be no more U.S. data outside of U.S. soil. It will all be based in Texas. Yeah. Texas. So TX. <laughs> now this is for TikTok. Correct. Okay. All right. Yeah. So, but the real loser out of all this <laughs> is if this bill passes, is the American citizen. And I'll let you speak to that more because we were talking about this before the podcast. Well, is there's varying degrees of this, right? It's because a privacy there's, issue. There's there's regulation, right? That's already on the books that the Biden administration is trying to leverage. But then there's new legislation that potentially could be passed, oh, the right? Best the best and, description you gave it's yeah. the Patriot Act on steroids. Pretty much, yeah. I mean, uh, the bill, what is it, S-868, I believe it's called. Don't quote me on that. But um, it's pretty much the Patriot Act on steroids. It says that uh, if you have a million or more users, the federal government has full transparent access to all of user data. So if you have a ring camera on your front porch, you have a Google Nest in your home, a Google a Google thermometer, right? Like all of that stuff technically has a million or more users. Now the federal government has full just access to all of your stuff with, without something. question. Isn't and they can something. also hold uh, private committees without having so it documented. Don't use it's Google. Scary. Don't use your Google camera to monitor your weed farm. Got it. <laughs> <laughs> Depends on how big the weed farm is. <laughs> it's only, it's only, it's only if it's four only plants, two plants, right? right? No, it's four plants yeah, in four the plants. state of Virginia. That's yeah. Virginia law. Yes. You're fine. This is federal, Federally, which is still yes, illegal. That's true. That's true. Oh, yeah, that is a gray area there. That is yeah, that. it's yeah. Just, yeah. Yeah, it is the federal government. So, like, the the reason why you see dispensaries, I know this is us going off topic again, but the reason why a dispensary gets raided is because they didn't pay their taxes. Yeah. So, that's anytime you see, like, all, like, why is this dispensary in California being raided, but the one next door isn't? One person paid their taxes. The other one didn't. The other one didn't. Yeah, I had a, um, there was a VC guy we met at Secret Knock years ago. Yeah. He did VC funding for uh, wheat startups. Yeah. And he said, Federal government could pay, care less pay, about it as other long, than the fact You pay your that, taxes yes. and overpay, and you'll be fine, and yeah. you won't be rated. Yeah. But if you don't, in yeah. that one year, you, you know, whatever. Yeah. Oops. Go bye-bye. <laughs> <laughs> That's so, interesting. Um, yeah, I, I just ultimately, you know, I, I think to your point, Cody, I think there should be a degree of skepticism that we as the average American have when – both sides Absolutely. of the political aisle are united well, you, in you, something. If you look right? at that committee as <laughs> well, and you actually look at every single member that was grilling as yeah. you know whatever yeah. the CEO of TikTok, they were all lobbied by Meta. Meta <laughs> spilled billions of dollars to the lobby to put certain members into that committee 
for that interview. So, of course, that is going to be the biggest winner because they dumped a billion dollars. It's the most American thing like, I've ever heard. Yay, <laughs> capitalism. <laughs> yeah. is, is there any irony, though, that literally to protect us from people looking into our data and telling us how to what to do, we're going to look into our data and tell us <laughs> what to do? I'm just, just Catch-22 right there, yeah. Oh, man. I'm, I'm from the government. I'm here to help. <laughs> so... We, so, should, we should probably introduce our guest. Yeah, at let's some point. do that. Let's do that. <laughs> well, this podcast is we're talking about money and taxes and business and of any person I know, right, as the same name as me, Ryan, and you're also your last name starts with an L, which also doesn't help. Very challenging. <laughs> Ryan Leggett and Ryan Leach. So, um, can you give us a brief synopsis as far as what you do, as far as the business that you own, and then we'll get into the nitty gritty of things or businesses. Sorry, correct me. Yeah. So, well, thank you. So, yeah, we, I basically wake up and do capitalism every day, <laughs> minus the meta thing that we just talked about. I'm, I'm getting there. I'm not. So at you that, don't have lobbyists yet. I'm not, at, I'm not at that level yet. Yeah. I, yeah. I, I, I don't like the IRS, but <laughs> don't tell them. But no. So I've been. Um, I think the best way to sum me up is I'm a business uh, coach. I minimize taxes. I'm a serial entrepreneur. So our, our my primary company actually. Uh, just hit our 10 year last year. I started it with some folding chairs back in 2012. Um, Congratulations. That's thank awesome. you. It was, mm -hmm. it was set out essentially to do two things. Um, one was to change the definition of what a professional is nowadays. I feel like our, our standard, like a lot of things, like even this TikTok discussion, we've really lowered our expectations and it's say the same turn. So is the actual results. So set out to actually raise the bar and then also create a place where you've got a one-stop solution for a business, for an individual, whether it's from investment planning to tax services to fractional CFO work. So we basically can do everything for a business. So all in-house from insurance, investments, business consulting, we'll help you sell your business. I think somewhere we have pet insurance, I don't know. <laughs> um, I probably need it some days, but so we do that. And then it's kind of morphed, honestly, um, you know, when you think about it, as we hit our 10 year, we started doing more and more to try to keep up. COVID was a big game changer, right? Uh, changes we had um, in the economy, we started trying to keep up with how do we add value, right? It doesn't really matter what it is specifically, but how do you impact people that need help? So we ex started expanding a lot of our business services. And now we, I think I run 10 or 12 different companies but they're all geared around helping people keep more of what they earn, minimize expense, minimize risk, and actually kind of achieve that American dream. And how many employees are most of the clients that you work with? Like, how, like what size businesses are they? So now um, we do a lot of work to kind of be the sword and shield for self-employed folks. Um, we have this really cool new platform to help them get like full benefits and workers' comp and verifiable income, and they actually essentially do it for free, uh, which is great. So we'll work with self-employed folks all the way up to billion-dollar companies. And do you find that there are common uh, on the small business end of it, right? So, you know, figure a few dozen employees, right, uh, to 50 or more, right? What, what do you see are some of the pitfalls that they make financially when they're trying to grow and scale their business, right? And I know you do a variety of stuff, right? I mean, you do everything from tax, you know, savings, right, and CPA work to what benefits for employees. Uh, you know, what what are some of the things that you you see business owners that maybe they they forget about or that they don't they lose sight on as they're growing? I think the I think fundamentally, right, most people are not entrepreneurs, right? They're not afflicted. Mm -hmm. I'm still trying to figure out my problems. <laughs> but by and large, people start businesses because they don't have a safe place to do their craft or it doesn't exist yet, right? And so they start a business. They're like, we're going to make it work. But the problem is, is that just because you started a company doesn't mean all of a sudden you have business acumen. And so 80% fail in the first five years. Mm -hmm. Those that don't, if you think about it, you go from fire to fire <laughs> To fire and if it's not on fire you just ignore it and what happens is you go from you start to scale the dynamic changes and unfortunately most businesses don't have resources or have someone that can come in 
and help them understand, right? So we see things all the time. There's tax inefficiencies and in what they're doing, even how they're paying themselves, how they're structured. Well, they don't save any money they for don't. taxes. No, and sometimes yeah. they, they, you know, people get so extended because they're, they're trying to manage the business minus running their books, having those pieces. They don't understand that not only do you have to build that, you have to balance empowering your people because you want to keep great folks, right? If you build your people, they build the company. And then a lot of people don't understand the importance of actually sharing your vision, your brand, and your marketing. And so they don't allocate dollars to new client development, and it ends up catching them. And so we very often, whether it's a gig worker to you know, a $50, $60 million a year company, we're finding 5 to 10% at minimum in cost savings while giving them better stuff. And I think part of it is part of it's busy access. And the other part is just most people want to go in and they have a specific widget and they want to sell the widget and then they want to move on. Hmm. Interesting. <clears throat> what would you say is the number one tax mistake new entrepreneurs? Because for me, when I first was self-employed, I didn't save any money to pay off taxes because I was so used to having nine to five job or, you know, you work at a you know W2 employee they take all the taxes out for you. You take a paycheck home, and then I get a refund, you know, an interest free loan to the government that I get back. Um, versus going 100% self employed, I didn't save any money. And then, oh, you owe us, you know, $16,000 or whatever. And like, uh, now I have to put this on a payment plan plus interest. So, what's best practices someone who's new should do? Like, what's a great percentage they should save? Is there systems in place that can do that automatically for them? Does it make sense to make themselves an employee of their own company and have a payroll company do that for them? What's the best approach here? Yeah, so a couple a couple things on that is, first of all, they need to find a good accountant. It doesn't have to be a $500, $500 an hour person. Heck, nowadays you can go on YouTube, right? You can go, You can pretty much go on social media and you can look at best practices to start a business. That's more important than anything because if you need capital to grow, you need to understand how your taxes work. And so that's the biggest challenge that they face is a lot of times they set up an LLC. They don't understand that they're still paying self-employment tax. But if they were set up as a sub S, then they wouldn't have to. And so there's not like a blanket percentage that they should save because if you do it correctly, the first couple of years, even if they have explosive growth, a lot of their um, income can be sheltered by offsetting expenses. Businesses have what's called QBI, where you can take 20% of your profits off the top and not pay any taxes on it. And so all those things can actually help them keep more of it. And the number one issue for small businesses is capital. So if you keep more of it, it's easier. The second one, in my opinion, is they need to have a two-market strategy. And they got to set that aside from the beginning. They need to have a budget, right? And a big part of it is... You're going to exhaust your friends and family in natural market really quickly. Finding a local partner that can help in the marketing space to at least get you going and actually have a plan and say, okay, when we hit this level of revenue, we'll upgrade to this piece. We'll upgrade to that piece. But having something in place that's going to actually get your message out is really important. It's actually, to your point, one of the things that we got really excited about is it's expensive. You look at uh, a lot of the major providers, right? ADP, Paychex, and we do work with both of them. Um, you look at Pelocity, you're going to spend $50, $60 a month running payroll, so you still have a cost, and then that still doesn't help you with quarterly filings or benefits. So for, for startup companies when they don't have employees, we actually started a company here this year, which is going to be a huge value add. We're already starting to you know, go in and move thousands of our clients that we had already saved money, now we're saving more. And so we work with a platform called Gig Workers Solutions. And what's cool about it is all the things you talked about with getting your business going, let's say you have a couple dozen people, or let's say you're a Microsoft, a self-employed person or a fresh business owner can utilize the platform to get help with their taxes. They can get set up correctly. It runs a payroll. And they get full benefits. So they get major medical. They get um, any elective they want, 401k, 
they actually get workers comp which is huge hmm. and so all of that a la carte services is there and from a fee structure after the discounts other things they get it's it's almost free so that's a big way that you can offload <laughs> All that parts of your business. And so is that, that because of the, the volume of people that you could get that are like kind of going in as a group together? Is that is that the idea of that concept? Or yeah, yeah so it's funny. You think about everything you guys start out talking about with technology yeah. and reachability. Uh, and I always joke in my house, I have three daughters. I call it Tiki Talk. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so regardless of the social media and, and, and you look at technology, what I'm talking about before was called a professional employment organization. And they've been around for decades. They're very profitable. They are a great service for people with employees, you know, five to um, say 3,000. Because after that, you can self-manage your costs. But they basically do everything for the employee. HR, payroll, full benefits, all of it. But up until this year, they said you could never do that for the small guy. It's not profitable. It's not worth anyone's time. And so until February, that didn't exist. But now for uh, pennies, they can take advantage of that professional employment organization model, and then they can pair up with you know with a, a, a market, even with you guys, like with Fresh Move, right? They could they could find different package resources where now they're actually able to scale, but they also have partners actually helping them do a lot of those pieces instead of them trying to figure it out themselves. Hmm. Would it <clears throat> make sense then? Say take. This guy right here, he has his own business. He is his own employee. Does it make sense to make himself an employee of his business from a tax saving standpoint, or he just pay himself under distribution? I don't know how you have your business set up if it's an LLC or, you know, sub S or whatever. Uh, Sole proprietor. Okay, so you're kind of is he technically screwing himself then, being a sole proprietor? I'll give you some cigarettes at the end, right? <laughs> but so the problem is, so the part of it is. You can get some write-offs, right? Which is great. The sole proprietor versus just an LLC hurts you because as soon as something heaven forbid happened to you, your business goes away. Like so a cat jumping off a. Uh, <laughs> yeah. He huh? was at he was at a uh, a photo shoot and a cat killed itself in front of him at, at a client's. <laughs> yeah. Used yeah. All and nine so, lives. And, <laughs> and, so, and so uh yeah, it, it jumped off jumped off a balcony and to its death. And I was, I was ten feet away from where the cat was. I didn't do anything. But he but could have been sued. That's yeah. the whole point. Did anyone notice him mumbling under his breath like an incantation, maybe? <laughs> <laughs> Messing with the occult. <laughs> but so if you have a lot of write-offs, right, that helps on your earnings, but it also means you didn't make any money. Mm -hmm. And so most people don't realize, A, the LLC helps you, okay, because it gives you protection from risk. It has, it has an, it's an asset, so it's going to continue beyond you. But – Utilizing a sub S selection, every dollar you make, right? So let's say you made ten thousand dollars in profit, right? Just to be simple, you're going to pay state and federal tax, but also you're paying fifteen point three percent, or fifteen hundred and thirty dollars of self-employment tax <sighs> on top, because when you're a W two employee, that Medicare and Social Security, that's the seven point um, six five. And then the FICA on the business side is the other 7.65. When you're self-employed, you pay all of it on the first 160,000, and it's 2.9 thereafter. But as an S corp election, you don't have to do all the corp filings or anything. It's a three-page form. There, your distributions are non-self-employment. They're called K1s. So they're That's not That's how we're taxed. set up. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Got to have a little W2 though. So you can usually get by the first year because you can say, hey, I couldn't really figure out what I was going to make. I didn't think I was going to make anything. So you can kind of – the first year, you've got a little wiggle room. Mm -hmm. But that's where I've been so excited about the countless hours we've put in to kind of get this platform off the ground with Gig because of the fact that now you could join that platform, and they do all of that for you. They do your payroll and, and all the other benefits. How much is it? So it's $175, and I'll give you guys context. So Paychex is the largest PEO after they bought Oasis. Mm -hmm. They started $1,000, I believe, in admin fee and they work their, per employee, and they work their way down. It's, very ex it's expensive, but the net result is still cheaper. So through technology, we were able to get this completely down. And by the way, someone can sign up in eight minutes or less. It's not 
it's not taking hours yeah, or days like yeah. like a lot of you can do it right on your phone. Yeah. Go to gigworkersolutions.com, put your information in, snap a picture of is your it check. Web based or is it on the it's, app store? It's um it's web based. We're gonna look at some app integrations. Right now it's all tied into a really unique uh, Salesforce and API structure to make it seamless. Mm -hmm. But at $175, you're you're at pennies compared to the large side. And then we added a really cool dis we like I like to work with disruptions. I like doing things that haven't been done before. I find them neat and interesting. And so we work with a really like our crypto mining farm. Yeah. In tiny office space. Well, that was neat because it helped me avoid paying taxes that year. In fact, I'm pretty <laughs> sure I paid less taxes than all of you in this room last year. But I, I, um, I but I paid a crap ton in taxes because of how, how does that work out? I had the other I had some other things I wrote off. Oh, like buying a CPA practice. So but year. would that help me then for since I overpaid taxes last year, then I technically pay less this year. You'll have yes, it'll carry your losses. Your like a, a loss or expense or things like that would carry forward. Whew. <laughs> so, but with the gig, with gig, right? So we added this cool, cool thing called Champ, which typically works with companies of like fifty or more employees. I look at it as a way to kind of fight the the bureaucracy. Like I hate health insurance. I feel like it's absolutely ripping people off. People don't understand how it works. Whether it's called premium from the government or taxes or it's from a private provider, it's all it's all overpriced, right? And it screws most of the American people. And even if they have it, they can't afford to use it. You have major medical, that's so that you don't have catastrophic loss. You're not gonna go to urgent care, you're not gonna get a Z pack, you're gonna carry your butt to work because you need a job. Mm -hmm. And so this is interesting because Champ and it, it by itself it works with people with groups of fifty or more. So they haven't gotten to a tech level where they could do small groups. They tried for a while, but they just had too much volume. What I like about it is now every gig worker gets it automatically, but it gives them free telemed, free urgent care, primary care. They get over 600 drugs, like even um, even Viagra, uh, Ryan, if you know, just throwing it out there. But so uh, they, they have a really Ooh. wide range of services. Um, My blood pressure is going down, so I need to... <laughs> I don't know if I'm going to make it to my car after this, but um, <laughs> but yeah. So all of those things are are literally no copay, and because it's never been done before, it, think of like a it's a mech or an essential coverage plan, which are common, blended with a self funded plan. It's never been done before, but yeah. it actually increases the employee's net pay. Interesting. Anywhere from a hundred to four hundred bucks a month, <clears throat> and then the employee makes the employer itself saves on the FICA. Because the 125 is the only legal way to eliminate that tax for rank and file. So it's literally net negative to implement. So there's no barrier. And then those employees actually use it. They get to do it. They have to do a wellness module once a month. But now that on average, because the minimum for this PEO is 3000 a month, right, for gig. On average, it's 90 to $110 that they get back. So when we're netting out their cost, yeah, we're at 175, but now you take 100 to 110 out of it, and now I'm at 75 to 65 dollars, and you can't even run payroll on that. Yeah, that's cool. It was that really just neat. Employee to get health it insurance, or is those employees get family as well? So it covers the whole family. Wow. And in, and it covers that they get. I've learned it's been humbling for me because we, I've been, we support 60,000 companies, and one of the one of the companies I work with or the other right from a aggregation it's about three million people i've learned a lot in the last 90 days even okay. beyond what i already knew but the number one i've got three daughters seven and under so my household's wild but my oldest just got into nintendo and i realized how bad i am at video games um <laughs> but i didn't really realize the number one um id theft in the household is coming from game systems I didn't even think about it. my Amex is tied to her account. She probably buys obnoxious stuff on Nintendo all the time. And that's the number one um, family focused uh, way of actually having your identity stolen. Wow. wow. So when we launched this PEO and started getting traction, which was cool, um, MetLife actually came in and said to get rid of all of our vendors. They want to exclusively uh, support and provide it. And they own a company called Aura, which is really cool but it provides like end-to-end -end ID protection for families. And so we worked out a partnership with them that we're providing it for free to all of the, all of the families that join um, the PEO. 
which is really neat. Nice. That's cool. Now, <clears throat> I do have one other question, too. I, also, I guess it's a tax write-off. When does it make sense for a business to purchase real estate? Because people keep talking, oh, real estate's a great way to offset taxes. But from a commercial standpoint, we pay a chunk of change in rent for this space. We got a great deal in this space, but still it's a chunk of change. When does it make sense for us to then buy a building, us to be a tenant? And then, of course, from a tax standpoint, and I want to hear your story about how you got your building. Because uh, when you told us that story, it was insane for what you got it for. Um, how, how can someone like us, when we get to that point, take advantage of uh, commercial real estate? Because our commercial uh, real estate agent told us when you get to about $5,000 in monthly rent is when it would make sense probably to buy a building because most businesses, these big businesses you see don't end up buying the building. They just rent. It's like Humana doesn't own this building. Could they own the building? Absolutely. They have enough money, but they just been renting from this space for the past, I don't know, 10 years. They probably should have bought it in my opinion, but when, when does it make sense to buy commercial real estate? And then what's the best route of going of that? Since I know you are a commercial landlord, I know you hate it sometimes when you like your elevator breaks down or the HVAC breaks down or whatever. <laughs> that was ins that was insane. That was a vendor problem. Yeah. But so with commercial real estate, from like and for me, I'm a capitalist at heart, right? So I like to give advice and not just let's not just do something just because you can doesn't mean you should necessarily. All right. I look at commer the commercial space as the owners have to have some liquidity, right, to be able to do it. It's got to make sense as far as how much they're going to occupy. And then you want to look at current rates, what's going on in your markets. But one of the neat things that I always recommend to look at is maybe 5,000 is a number. I would say probably when you're closer to like 10 to 15. Um, and because you want to you want to be able to find a, a space in an ideal world that you can have other tenants. And so the other tenants help you to um, kind of pay your overhead, pay your expenses, all of those things, and it just makes it easier. And yes, I had this, Ryan's probably still making fun of me. I was in an airport coming back from, I don't know, Disney somewhere, and um, our, I guess our elevator exploded somehow <laughs> in the building. In the building? <laughs> yeah, I guess it just, the motors burnt, and then it just kept beating itself on on the bottom of the oh, elevator. Wow. Did somebody in it? Or not? Uh, no. <laughs> but, but then the vendor uh, that we had a contract with for the elevator, okay, it's a four-letter word, starts with an O, and I won't blow them up. Um, but they came out for like nine months, and this was, you know, in the tail end of the pandemic and all those things. Like, oh, it's uh, – we fixed it three times and they never got it work or they were waiting on parts. Then at one point they accused somebody of pouring water in the lines. <laughs> I mean, it's a lock. No one's going to know where to go pour water. I mean, get out of here. Right. Yeah. So we ended up switching vendors and getting it fixed. Um, but by and large, that's a isolated issue. So for me, you know, we use Tallheimer here locally and they've been, they've been phenomenal. Like they manage everything. And so what helps me is I, I would say when you're buying real estate, do it in a way that you're going to make money on it. And what I found is that depending on like how creative you want to be with your space, like you guys have an awesome space here. I might, I'm not going to lie. Maybe from get it from the Greek, I was rubbing the wall on the way in, um, all the grass, but, uh, <laughs> That's soft. A furry wall. If we want to do a session to where we can, we want to have those effects where we can all get really, 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 <clears throat> Hi, <laughs> and then start touching walls. Have some great gummies. Just bring Jonah Hill in. But yeah. um, but yeah. So you want to get it set up where you have a lot of you have revenue coming in to make it creative, and then it becomes another revenue source for the owners. The neat thing for me is, first of all, you never want to own the real estate in your business. You want a separate like LLC that or or corp that just owns the real estate, because then it becomes it's all passive revenue. It separates the risk. And then the neat thing for businesses is sometimes it's not even about whether it makes sense to rent, rent or own. It's about how do you manage money costs. And so let's say you guys are paying 10000 in rent a month just for keep the numbers even. And you could go out and purchase a space and you got tenants or you didn't, right, depending on the size of your investment. You could then turn around, same ownership structure, 
you guys could spend 15000 or 20000 on rent and tie in some capital improvements and, um, you know, paid extra for some feng shui or whatever. But then that money comes out of the profit of your company that's earned income and moves into passive real estate income. So it's taxed at a lower rate. So it can also help you guys. And then you so start the tax to deferment and the original business, right? That's the value that's getting, right? And then it's going to the, the other one. So yeah, I, I, I find it interesting. You said the threshold for the number because you have to have a building that's big enough to allow you to have other tenants to bring the cash flow in, right? To make all that work. Yeah, that makes sense. Interesting. Like we, we, I don't need to pay rent. Like I got, I don't know if it's lucky or I just took my time, but I spent two and a half years on uh, the building Ryan was talking about. And I had great help, right? It goes back to when you start a business or you have a project, go find someone that knows more than you. For me, that's always been easy. And um, partner with them. And so I, I got to know a really great guy here locally, and he is kind of a wizard when it comes to commercial real estate. And we spent a couple years, found this place, and – it was it was price. We got the right price that we wanted on the space. Was he a uh, commercial agent or? Mm -hmm. he, oh, okay. His, his name's Brian Berkey. He's here in like the Richmond area. The guy's amazing, and he's not paying me to say that, but the guy's awesome. He's <laughs> he's he helped me with everything from the transaction to we actually renovated seventy percent of a seventy thousand square foot building, and had Baskerville come in. We actually won some awards for it, but he had already gotten paid. He didn't have to do that. Right. So he took the time to invest in the relationship and I've sent him tons of referrals since then, but he didn't ask for it. So the building you bought, did you, was it a foreclosed? Yeah. So, it, so I, cause the story is insane to me of how little money you put into it and what it's worth is crazy to me. Yeah. Can you guys cut this part of this part of the podcast? <laughs> so, uh, but, uh, so we, so I looked around at options and we looked at, uh, Innsbruck, we looked at a lot of different areas, but I found this space and my main company anchor, right? Nautical. So like 70% of the building is surrounded by water. In fact, it's all, it's the last rounded steel frame building in Richmond, um, that was built and it was built on, um, cement, um, stilts. So a big chunk of it is actually, if you look out the window, it's in the water, which is really cool. Wow. So, but yes, it was, this one was a foreclosure. It was the last asset inside of a, um, like bank portfolio that they had, and they would have had to have a huge six figure cost to recertify the fund. So they had to get out. They had done no maintenance. It was probably 40, 40% 40 occupied, which was great because we wanted half the space anyway. Um, so yeah, so we ended up getting the space for, Probably, probably thirty-five cents of what it was worth. Wow! And leveraged two different banks, and I ended up. I think I only put a hundred thousand down, and the building is an eight-figure building. <laughs> but and then we were able to turn around and take the equity out of it, cashier that into the renovations. Um, yeah, I'm actually sad about that because my I had a five-year on that, and I'm gonna have to do something with it next year. But um. I, my interest rate on my loan is insane. Like it's it's very close to the three number. Oh wow! Like not not the four, but the very low end of the three number. Wow, that's awesome! A it's a beautiful space. building. Uh, yeah, having been there, it's it's great. Yeah, it really is. So I would just tell you, I guess to that, is you just gotta be patient, right? Don't force things. I think you can look for things that are there, but but you just need to do an analysis and see what makes sense. And that's where I think adding partners. So how yeah. can I, how can myself and James find a building for a hundred thousand dollars? That's worth. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's what we want. <laughs> so I think it's, well, it goes back to resources, right? Like Ryan sent me stuff for two and a half years. And then I, I kind of already had the acumen on how to get the banks to do what I needed. That's something that someone can help you guys with. I'd be happy to help you. You can typically find more of a, a finance and tax professional. You want one that's not just focused on product, but someone that can actually be a consultant or a planner, and they can give you advice um, versus just saying, hey, I'm kind of pigeonholed. I can just buy, sell you this investment account because they can give you ideas that'll, that'll help you. Cool. <laughs> <laughs> I'm I'm still baffled by the story of the how, <laughs> how massive your building is. Uh, you have the gym in it now, or have you guys have you started that? Um, 
Is our, st- if our is our mining stuff still in that room? It'll be done by the middle of May. So we we just finished the permit. So what we we had some space open. We're occupied otherwise, and like we have a we have an arcade, we have a bar in our office. So we have we try to make it. It's very Googleish. Um, Do you have nap pods? Uh, we have not nap pods, but we have because we want them quasi conscious. <laughs> uh, but we have we have comfortable chairs with tables, so they they don't have to work at their desk. They can work anywhere in the building. They can work outside. We have a cafe outside, but. We thought about what to do with the space and like a lot of us like i'm in early i my um my coo is in there same time and they're around four o'clock in the morning and so i'll go sometimes you're in at four o'clock in the morning and how long do you when do you when do you leave usually at four 12 hour day yeah so yeah so up at 2 a.m and to work at four off at four hanging out with the family till what five nine o'clock um usually sleep by 11 yeah 10 or 11. You function so. on like four hours of sleep. Yes, but I have a very abusive relationship yeah. with caffeine. Okay. <laughs> I was like, "How much cocaine do you do?" Like, Man. <laughs> none. If anyone's none. listening, not at all. <laughs> none. Not at all. Um, <laughs> oh man. Uh, God, I, actually, what time is it? But uh, <laughs> if this if this wasn't flagged yet, it definitely was there. <laughs> God, my nose hasn't started bleeding yet, but, but uh, oh, man. we have we'll a lot. Sp- I will spit my coke out. <laughs> It's a side effect, but a lot of times, um, and then you use the word coke. Yeah. You're right on. Oh, perfect. It. But, uh, it so burns. I, so we have a lot of people that just come in. We're a very high en- energy office. We have a joke that, you know, our saying is we work like captains, play like pirates. And so a work lot of times. play hard. Yeah. yeah. So people come in early and we thought, well, what kind of, what can we do to continue to add value to, you know, like our staff? Like we already support the national downtown. So we give our employees tickets to every show they want to attend. VIP, the whole nine yards. And we're like, well, what if we could do something that they can have a lunch break or in the morning they can go work out? And so we're actually going to build like a 2,200 square foot, like 24 hour gym just for the, for the staff. Nice. What used to be a crypto mine. No gym membership. That's cool. So no gym membership. It'll never. 30 to $100 a month savings right there. It'll never be full. The same room where the shower and Yeah, there's a shower in there, everything. So it's just one more. That's awesome. You pay $100 for gym membership? I I don't. I do. I know. I pay. No, I pay 75. I pay 75, yeah. But ACAC is like 75. But ACAC is like a luxury gym. Like the towels they give you are towels, not paper towels. They're like towels that they then wash you just go to yes. gold's and gym and get yeah. like the brown towel it's like a little square you know yeah i yeah. won't even <laughs> tell you ryan the virtue about what both those towels are used for yeah <laughs> <laughs> there's only so much downy can do <laughs> <laughs> i had that experience it's, the other day they have, i was in the sauna the other day and this guy was doing terrible things to the towel and i was like <laughs> i'm gonna be using that three days from now <laughs> at some <laughs> point like, at some point why does i'll it smell be smell funny it? <laughs> oh my gosh uh, but they do have saunas. That's the big thing. Is like yeah. you know, to pay for a and sauna. You had your own sauna yeah. in your guest room for a while. You yeah, used it. but it takes like an hour to warm up. So I have to like first pre- world, first world problem. Yeah, it's first world problem. So I sold it. <laughs> I sold it for a profit. I bought it during the pandemic. A mm-hmm. uh, person needed cash. I got it for like a thousand bucks, and I sold it for twenty five hundred. <laughs> so, marketing garage sales. Garage sales. <laughs> Gary V. Garage sales. <laughs> New York Jets. What garage sales are you going to that there's a sauna <laughs> sitting in the front? Because I can tell you any sauna. It's an infrared in sauna. First of all, you overpaid. Because I can tell you, if I had to drag a damn sauna out to the street, it's not going back in the house. <laughs> it it actually comes out. It, it was like a, an adult Lego thing. It actually breaks down fairly easy. But brand new, they're like five grand. Yeah. Um, and I thought I, I got a steal on it was an older couple. They used it like twice, and they didn't need it uh, or yeah, want it anymore. It, it just twice. sat in their room. They probably were worried they didn't have enough time to let it heat up. That's why why. <laughs> I ran the same issue. I just I, – I flipped sa- – I'm going to flip saunas as my sidekick. Uh, no, so I sold it. This is the uh, end. <laughs> <laughs> it's getting hazy. <laughs> <laughs> Honey, where's that Coke? <laughs> Seen from the Titanic. <laughs> Shocking, hey, shocking if content. made it this far. <laughs> First of all, that was a terrible movie because sh- that just shows how selfish Rose was. There was plenty of room. I know. Oh, yeah. Yeah, oh, it, yeah, it was a door. Like, it yeah. was... Mm. <laughs> anyway. You know, someone tried to re 
recreate that whole scene with an actual door cut it to the uh, actual size, it, it doesn't work. No, they it did work. Sink. No, it doesn't work. They sink. Well, they both fit on it, but... No, they, they sink in the But water. they still sink. Yeah, <laughs> they, they would both die. Sorry. <laughs> burst that bubble. I'm a nerd. <laughs> I'm a nerd. So so you're saying that she... But but it is She's, realistic that she would live, is what you're saying. No, or if they both got onto it, it wasn't buoyant. I, I know what you're saying, but, right. but her as an individual, she could survive. Right. Yeah. How they were originally. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So How did the good. door get down there? All of the debris from the... Yeah, yeah all it broke apart and it blew, broke, blew know, up. And, oh yeah, remember it like remember it, 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 it's yeah, a it's movie. Half, yeah, it's yeah. a movie. <laughs> Who knows how it got down there? Yeah, any magic. Uh, we Any have magic, fully yeah. uh, departed now from so, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> Any last tips you would give a new entrepreneur, or a new business owner, or someone starting a business? What's a sector you could see that someone should put emphasis in to well, starting? Tips are you know it's a lot. It's really hard to hit a moving target, right? And so I think one of the challenges a lot of times people they want to do it, and then when they realize what it takes to play the role, they second guess themselves and they get frozen. And that's the worst thing. You got to keep moving. You're going to get it wrong at least half the time, if not more, uh, in the beginning. But you got to keep moving. And it's about your network and your team more than it is about you. If you can align yourself with people that are cheering you on and they can help add value to what you're doing, you have a far greater chance of success. As far as businesses, I think ch the challenge today is um, really a good area. If you get into something that's medical related, as we continue to have folks aging, I think business services are more critical than ever because we're having a shift. The, the, the freelance or gig economy is growing 15 times faster than the rest of the economy. And then all the services that they would use or frequent are not keeping up. Uh, so I think mm. there are huge opportunities in that space. Obviously, I believe it because I'm invested in it. Uh, and then really just anything that can help provide connectivity from a branding perspective, uh, marketing, quality of life related industries. I think we've shifted our, our spending patterns. We have shifted a lot right over the last 20 years. Usually you had one, you lived where you grew up, you worked one job and you got a pension and you retired and you called it a day, right? Now everything's so different and people are living more for experiences mm -hmm. and quality of life than they are um, necessarily saving. Not saying it's a good thing, uh, but I think there's a lot of opportunities where you can actually add value in those spaces while actually making a good living too. Mm. That's great, great takeaways, great, great takeaways. Take well, thank you for being on today. We yeah, yeah. really appreciate it. Yeah, very enlightening. I'll have to talk to you after this. <laughs> I, I'm just going to go figure out what type of door they tested. Uh, <laughs> we're going to have a, a follow-up to this. Absolutely. Every guest I bring on, it shows that Aaron needs to hire the person. That oh, I my God. Realize, oh, you don't just have business How contracts. unbelievably unprepared I am for life. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> life of a creative. Let's, let's yeah. think about nothing but doing the thing you want to do. That's that's my philosophy. <laughs> Let's think about nothing else. <laughs> so the next time a cat kills itself in front of you, you're prepared. <laughs> yeah. Meow. <laughs> Lawyer. <laughs> so. Well, that concludes this episode of Think Fresh Move Four podcast. Next week, we're talking about the death of TV and its effect on marketing. <laughs> so shed a tear for television and soap opera. Commercials. Nah, it's the worst. It's the worst. Everything's the worst. The worst no tears. Yeah. There's still cable. People still yeah, pay still, for it. That's still a thing. It's there. So. It's really it. It's <laughs> definitely there. That's what I can say about it. It's it does exist. Yeah.